Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to have a look at Endgame number 94 from the book 100 Endgames You Must Know by Jesus Jalavila. In this endgame we are going to have a look at King Bishop and a Rook against a King and a Rook. Now this endgame has four different scenarios. We will have a look for different positions. So here in this first position it's a winning endgame for White. How can White win this position? The first move is to play rook f8. Now the whole idea is once um, the rook has to, black's rook has to go to e8 to prevent the checkmate. So now white simply takes the seventh rank for y in white's perspective or black's second rank. Rook f7 and after rook e2, going back to take give rear checks, rook h7 is played. Black here plays rook e1 and now the second aspect of this winning endgame is to transfer the rook to the other side. And once that's done, rook c1 is played to prevent a checkmate. Uh, so after that, bishop b3. Bishop b3 is played simply to cover the d1 square. The black rook attacks the bishop and then bishop e6 is played. And as you can see, white is now threatening checkmate here. Rook d3 is played. Uh, and after bishop d5, rook c3 again. And then rook d7 check. This is a time winning check. Uh, king c8 and rook h7. As you can see, the king cannot stay and c8 or go to d8 because if the king stays in the either of these two squares, it's a checkmate. So the king is forced now to go to b8. Um, and after that, rook b7 check, king c8 and rook b4. Now, uh, uh, after that, king d8 is played. And here, bishop c4, it stops a rook uh, from coming to c8 anymore. And there is a checkmate threat. So it's a uh, mate in 3 now. King c, for example, if king c8, bishop e6, king d8. And after the king goes to the back rank, rook c8. And then the rook takes the rook. And this is a checkmate. Now in the first position, we had a look at the kings in the center. Now the kings have gone uh, to the C file. So um, is this a winning? Of course, it's the same technique. You can use the same technique to win, which I won't go through that again. But I just want to show there is one defensive setup which black can use, which you should know how to win against. So here, we'll go back to this uh, thing, rook e8. Rook goes to uh, d8 and then rook e7. That was the first plan, simply to take the second rank. And according to our uh, first example, we played rook d2, uh, coming to the second rank to give rear checks. That was the plan. But however, in this scenario, black can play rook h8. It is another defensive method. How can white win this position? Rook a7, transfer to the other side. Rook b8, rook b7. And then king a8. Now, what happens in this position if the king goes to c8? If that's the case, it's a mate in two after bishop d6. Say rook comes to h1, just a random move, and then uh, rook b8 is a checkmate. So going back to this position, the correct move is king a8. After that, bishop d6 is played to cover any checks. Rook h1 uh, with rear checks. Now rook g7 is played, so now black threatens from c1, bishop c5, rook b1, and here white plays the critical move, rook g4. As you can see, now the rook can attack from both sides, bishop b7, and now it's a mate in 3. Say for example, if bishop b6, rook f7, rook g8, and then after the um, rook takes the other rook on the back rank, it's a checkmate. Now in this third position, we are going to have a look at the kings on the knight on the B file. Um, unfortunately, this is a drawn in game. We'll see how it is. Rook d8, rook c8, and we take the second, uh, the seventh rank or the second rank for black. Rook f7, rook c2, and as you can see, uh, there is absolutely no um, no zugzwang here. And why cannot uh, white win this position? The main reason for that is um, from this position, there is not enough room for the rook to go back. In the previous two examples, we had at least 
two files from the king and unfortunately in this instance we just have only one file rook c3 bishop c6 now we obviously attack the king uh, white defends it rook c3 and bishop c6 and now uh, the king white king tries another trick to go to c5 and eventually go to d6 uh, rook f6 check here and the bishop blocks it rook f1 rook g8 check because there is no uh, possibility to checkmate from the from the eighth rank we are now threatening the king or we are pushing the king to the a file so that's what's going to happen and after bishop d5 rook d1 rook a check king b6 and as you can see now uh, moves are being repeated the whole reason just to emphasize the fact that white cannot make any decisions and uh, or, or progress and finally rook a2 is played and how can black now draw this position the correct move is rook b1 and this is called the second rank defense now in this fourth example we have the kings on the a file and um, so how can uh, this is a winning end game fortunately for white how can white win this position we simply have to play rook h2 rook b1 rook h6 now there's no point in taking on the seventh rank the whole purpose is the rook cannot there is no files uh, after the a file to for the rook to come so there's no point in getting the seventh rank rook b7 bishop b6 and now this is a tricky move rook k7 please do not take the rook with your bishop if you do so this is a stalemate the correct move is uh, king b5 trying uh, allowing the king to go to c6 as the rook covers the sixth rank there's no problem of any um, checks from that rank and now rook f8 bishop c7 rook g8 after bishop d6 rook e8 is played and after rook h1 now there is a checkmate in three rook c8 can be played king b6 and now as you can see there is no more check on b8 so the rook has to come to say c2 rook a1 and after the rook takes the rook this is a checkmate i hope you enjoy this video for more videos like this please like and subscribe and it's bye for now